Thank you very much, Mark. And I'm not sure if at this moment it's not time to jump to the discussion immediately. No, no, I've seen your slides. You've got a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, can I have next slide and maybe also that device? Yeah. So next slide, please. So uh, as Mark uh, introduced, uh, I'm coming from a pre-qualification team. And what was finally the reason why we started to be so much engaged in these processes? It was that we assessed pre-qualified product we inspected facilities, we continue to maintain this, this product, but that's not end of story. And that product must be used by patients in those countries for which uh, it's, uh, it's targeted. Yeah. So we need somehow to, to intervene, uh, to, to facilitate and, and accelerate uh, access. And not only that, we needed to be assured that finally, if product is approved for use in some countries, it's really approved under conditions under which we assessed it. So that's quality parameters are the same, that claims for use correspond with uh, what has been, has been approved. Only after that product can be seen as pre-qualified in, in the country. So again, need to develop some, some mechanism. And when starting to think about it, so it was obvious that we cannot just uh, invest into development of very specific process. <coughs> that it should have potential to serve as some kind of, of model. Some kind of model which uh, can help uh, regulatory authorities with, with limited resources to benefit from information uh, which, is, uh, which is available and to react more flexibly uh, on uh, therapeutic, uh, therapeutic needs. Okay, so what were the starting, uh, starting assumptions? And uh, we discussed these assumptions broadly with, with regulators in, uh, in uh, regulatory authorities which traditionally cooperated with us. We discussed them also with uh, uh, applicants for uh, pre-qualification. And uh, finally it was that if having summary of regulatory expertise, if having sufficiently detailed outcomes of regulatory inspections, and uh, if sharing them with regulators, it can help them. It can help them to eliminate duplications in their investment, uh, to, to support their decision making. And uh, of course that's when, uh, when uh, benefiting from such a assessment inspection summaries, one has to be assured that it's the same product, that uh, the regulatory data which are submitted are technically speaking uh, the same, uh, that the expertise is understood, what it does represent, and because no one can fast change uh, national legislations, no one can touch those sensitive issues of national sovereignty, so that it must be given about uh, intact. There had to be considered issues of uh, sharing of confidential information, and also, uh, also uh, assure about proper regulatory follow-up after decision is, is taken. So, uh, okay. Uh, this is very simplified scheme of national regulatory approval process. Application, processing of application, decision. And uh, all the trick what we started to practice in different arrangements is that we organize provision of certain package of supporting document demonstrating already organized assessment and inspections and that regulatory outcome is coming from different different parties. And we started at first uh, with concept that it came from WHO, 
because it's easier. And we have that package of assessment outcomes and, uh, and uh, inspection reports immediately at hand, so we can, we can share it. And this was three years ago, the, the start of the first collaborating registration uh, process, which we started to pilot for pre-qualified medicines. And because we, we don't have any, any legislative power on or or any, any other empowerments and technical ones. So the process had to be voluntary. Voluntary for regulators, voluntary for interested manufacturers. And if anything is voluntary, so naturally there must be incentives. Incentives to, to follow it. So incentives for regulators was that it will facilitate their work. They will have well-organized dossiers because dossiers will be submitted as approved by ourselves. And for manufacturers, it was especially that regulatory authorities committed themselves as much as possible to terminate process within 90 days if having these, these data. So it was also incentives for both parties to agree with sharing of confidential information. Yeah. So uh, we developed uh, a set of documents which uh, assured that uh, product registration dossiers in uh, in countries are the same as approved uh, approved by by us, and we introduced internet-based uh, instrument for uh, sharing of uh, confidential information. It started to work. We we share uh, based on agreement of company for each specific product to each specific country information with uh, interested uh, regulators. And not only that, after having regulatory approval, uh, the product is maintained in the same way like in pre-qualification. It started to be formal process, approved through formal WHO uh, processes. And maybe it can, it can uh, uh, look like a complicated process, but in fact, for each participant in the process, there are only two steps to, to follow. And for manufacturer, it's, or applicant for registration, it's to start with information to us, that there is agreement with information sharing, and when submitting data to regulatory authority, uh, also providing them the agreement to communicate with, with us, and declaring that product is, uh, is the same as submitted and using dossier as approved by pre-qualification. So you can see that also there is a harmonization component in that. And we share the data. If necessary, we provide additional, additional explanation. And when the registration is granted, we are informed about the outcome. And because these processes are independent on, on uh, our decision, we just provide expertise and advice, there can be even uh, regulatory decisions which deviate from ourselves, but it's extremely, extremely rare. But we need to have that information to be assured that the product is the same. And also to monitor process, we collect, uh, collect uh, uh, dates, and, and calculate uh, the time, and we make those products which were registered by this way public on, on website. So these are countries which now cooperate <coughs> with us and which signed an agreement to participate in, uh, in the process. Those green ones have already experience with uh, terminated uh, uh, processes. Those yellow ones are, uh, are starting and those blue ones, unfortunately, didn't have any uh, application, application yet. Yeah. But uptake of the process through those three years is, uh, is growing. Uh, now we have about uh, uh, 115 finished uh, processes and over 100 uh, processes is, um, uh, are in pipeline. And there is experience with all categories of products, including, uh, including uh, TB products for first and second line, uh, second line uh, treatment. And 
Here you can have uh, <coughs> a summary of experience in, in countries. Yeah, so most experience is, is Nigeria after the Zambia yeah, and go on and uh, go on. And what is important to be, to be stressed here? that those countries which are newly joining because of lack of experience, so sometimes there must be, must be organized more support, more, uh, more uh, tuning, what's natural, before the process starts to be more uh, regular. And this is the most uh, important, and uh, Mac already indicated that Median time uh, over years was 74 days for total duration from submission to uh, registration. Here you can have a look how it is in, in more detail. Yeah? So 80% of registrations are achieved by, by this process in total time less than 120 uh, days. Yeah? So if considering uh, just regulatory time, we are close to those expected 90 days. But of course, there are also outliers, and these are interesting cases uh, deserving sometimes more uh, analysis, which we organize with, with countries during annual meetings. So countries which participate and contacts are uh, on a website, similarly list of products which have been registered in line with pre-qualification. In, uh, in different countries. <coughs> so, uh, because of this accumulated experience and, and successfully running process, so uh, we, uh, we came uh, to set a revision of the process, extension to, to vaccines, and also started to consider this uh, process for uh, diagnostics and for, uh, for, other, for other health products. And as was mentioned, because not for all important products we generate that regulatory assessment and regulatory experience. So we started to adapt the process also for those medicines which were assessed by regulatory authorities which we call stringent, yeah? like US FDA, EMA, European authorities, uh, TGA and, uh, and uh, others. And this is the pilot which is now ongoing. We have the first experience. Uh, you will listen more to experience of the first company which uh, participated. But we tried to design the process to serve any kind of medicine, either generic or, uh, or innovator. Uh, for all therapeutic uh, categories and also for, for different types of regulatory approvals, approvals in brackets, yeah, because, for example, Article 58 is just provision of opinion. Yeah. Uh, in, in PEPFAR process, it's, it's also uh, a bit different, and there are uh, similar other processes uh, organized leading to assessment of uh, products for use in other countries. So the, the process is designed to serve also for these types of uh, assessments. Again, process cannot interfere with national, national legislations. And in WHO role, we must promote through such processes also regulatory cooperation, networking, work sharing, harmonization. And our intention was that the, the process not necessarily must depend on WHO intervention because we are not generating expertise. We are just mediators. Yeah, so the process can work also if established without direct WHO involvement. So uh, principle is very same like for pre-qualified medicines. There is expertise which is shared through defined uh, mechanism with interested regulatory authorities to facilitate their decision. And 
it's, it's not necessary to read it. Important is only to have a look on extent of what is in a red, because what is in red is different from those principles which we applied for pre-qualified products. So you can see that largely the principles are the same and that the process is only slightly, slightly modified and must be modified because there is another party which is stringent regulatory authority. Uh, concerning logistics and mechanics of the process, it's, it's of course a bit more, uh, more complicated. Yeah, there is no time to go to, to details, but the, the first step is that interested company comes to agreement with a relevant reference regulatory authority that assessment inspection reports can be used. After that, it's submitted. There is, uh, there is agreed uh, uh, content of, of dossier, which is adapted dossier, like it has been uh, submitted to, uh, to that stringent regulatory authority and, uh, and uh, agreement with information exchange. There is very simple mechanism uh, assuring about authenticity of, of documents which, need, which can be activated only in case of, of need and regulatory authority after that is expected to decide. Our role is supportive, facilitating and to be able to facilitate we also sign confidentiality undertaking with interested companies and we have full package of data like it's submitted for regulatory approvals. So this is again a mechanism uh, facilitating, um, facilitating uh, information exchange and making life easy. And feedback at the end, yeah? That the process can be monitored and uh, improved. So uh, there is a set of documents which were uh, uh, subject to, to agreement with uh, IFPMA yeah. and what is, what is finally our role? Yeah. We are some kind of conveyor and uh, we, we try for important products which are agreed and, and mutually decided between ourselves, treatment group and, uh, and interested companies. Uh, we try to, to come to agreement with uh, regulatory uh, authorities on, uh, on uh, using of, uh, of, uh, on use of this, uh, this process, select the, the process, select the product, and we facilitate organization of uh, so-called assisted assessment sessions, during which product and, and background of assessment is discussed with uh, regulators. We can invite also uh, experts uh, who were involved in the assessment of uh, the product uh, to provide uh, uh, justification of their position of risk benefit. And, uh, and uh, also during these meetings, there is opportunity to consolidate <coughs> list of comments and questions which is coming back to company because there are always some issues which still deserve further clarification. Yeah. And uh, another, another role is that we facilitate communication between uh, regulators and, uh, and uh, involved uh, company and, and we monitor, monitor the process. So uh, here is now a list of countries which participate in, uh, in the pilot. Uh, you can see that there is 100% uh, not complete overlap, but all these countries participate and have experience also from that collaborative procedure on pre-qualified products. And we finalized the pilot for the first product and now we are in a starting phase uh, of, of pilot for four additional, additional products for uh, three of them EMA is uh, reference authority, for one of them it's UK uh, MHRA. Yeah. And 
we were really surprised from the first pilot how much experience we accumulated and how much we, we learned. Uh, because, okay, yeah, positive result was that the registration were achieved, uh, achieved faster. But for us, very positive surprise was that even pharmaceutical companies were able to agree on common, common approach and common set of, of documents. And we were able to, to come to agreement between pharmaceutical companies and regulators what can be a reasonable balance also concerning confidentiality of uh, shared uh, information. Uh, also, also we, we learned how important it is when it comes to submission in countries to reflect the, the current regulatory status of the product, not just the status at the time of submission, because there can be already some variations ongoing, yet there can be new safety data. And we also learned, because the first case was based on uh, EMA, uh, as the reference uh, regulatory authority, we also learned that consolidated, even full, confidential assessment reports do not contain data which for regulators in other countries are important for their decision making. And because of that, uh, again, it was agreed with pharmaceutical companies, uh, we introduced two new concepts. And they, uh, it represents two, two types of new additional documents. And one is something like quality passport. We call it quality information summary. So it's document which summarizes all essential quality parameters, starting from raw materials to, uh, to specifications of final product, because this assures what is the product which has been assured, uh, assessed by regulatory authority and what are differences which have to be documented, which have to be explained. And uh, the, the other is that decision taken by stringent regulatory authority is valid for their population, their territory. And uh, there can be differences in, in study populations, differences in population pharmacokinetics, in disease epidemiology. There can be uh, differences in, uh, in uh, interactions. There can be differences in availability of diagnostics for uh, safety monitoring. So, uh, so uh, uh, we agreed that to overcome this and to, to be able to translate that decision of stringent regulatory authority to other environments, companies start to compile so-called bridging report in which are explained all these issues which are relevant for transfer of regulatory decision from, uh, from other. And we have first examples which now will be, uh, will be tested. And I think that uh, it's, it's practically, practically all because uh, now, now uh, uh, there, is, there is one important message for anyone who would like to be interested to, to start this process. We cannot take at this moment any guarantee that the process will be faster. But what we learned, it is faster and it cannot cause any harm to participate because you can only benefit. And, uh, and this is practically the last slide. The similar principles of sharing information are also now used with, with our support uh, for products which are assessed by individual regulatory authorities in Africa. And there will be a talk, uh, talk about it. So thank you for the attention.